Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, FBL Consult here, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys my final Double Game Week 34 free hit draft. Now, we waited quite a while to record this video, but that was because I was waiting for the Liverpool and Arsenal games in Europe to be completed before I could assess the minutes that these players got, and thereafter kind of form a prediction of how many games I think they will start in the Double Game Week, and that obviously impacts who we choose from these teams as well. So that's what we're going to discuss here in this first part of the video before we jump into my free hit draft in the second part of the video and hopefully you guys find this video useful and enjoy it if you do please do drop a like as well as subscribe if you are new around here we are trying to push on to 7.5k subscribers by the end of the season so if you aren't subscribed yet, you've been watching my content all this while, or if you're new around here, please do hit that button and try to help us to hit 7.5k. That would be a dream. But if not, let's discuss this graphic here. And the way I've kind of organized these players is from the top, those are the players that have the most minutes in Europe and all the way down to the bottom is the least minutes that they've played. So let's talk about the Liverpool assets first. So Van Dijk, Allison, and McAllister all played 90 minutes. They played the full game against Atlanta last night. But when we look at these names here, I don't think it kind of um, you know scares us too much because it's kind of expected Van Dijk and Allison both playing 90 minutes and I doubt this would kind of impact their minutes going into double game week 34 because Klopp just simply cannot rest these two players. Those are the kind of the core structure of the defense. I don't see Van Dijk being rested anytime soon. Same for Allison as well, he's a keeper. So let's go on to McAllister here. And I think McAllister has played quite a lot of minutes recently. Again, another 90 minute game for him against Atlanta last night. I do think he is a core player in that Liverpool kind of midfield, but I do see it happening that it could be a case he could be rested for one of the games against either against Fulham or against Everton simply because the games are really coming in quick succession and he has had quite a number of minutes in his legs already. So it's not impossible that McAllister misses out one game. But if not, I think it's also possible that he plays both. It really depends on his recovery, of course. But I don't see a case where uh, any one of us would kind of be impacted by this because those with McAllister, either you carry him forward from the past few game weeks, maybe you went for a differential. Or in this week, if you are going for a Liverpool um, outfielder, I doubt we will go for McAllister as well. There are a lot of other better assets which I will touch on later down the list as well. So I doubt McAllister makes too much of a difference. For Robertson and Trent, this one's the interesting one because I think they present as good differentials for double game week 34 if we're going for Liverpool defenders. If you don't want to go for the standard kind of pick, the safe pick, which is Van Dijk, and you go for Robertson or Trent, they both played about 70, 79, 72, 79 for Robertson, 72 for Trent. So around a 70-ish minutes um, for both of them. And I think how this impacts their minutes going into double game week 34 is I foresee Trent being rested in one of those games against either against Fulham or Everton and then starting the next one. So... I don't think it will be a case where Trent starts both simply because he was already rushed back from injury uh, because of Connor Bradley's kind of sudden injury in that game. Right, so he came off at halftime, if you remember, and then Trent just immediately came back on, um, you know, kind of ahead of schedule. And since then, Trent has played quite a bit of minutes as well. So I think what would be the case in Double Game Week 34, Trent starts one and then he misses out the other, maybe he comes off the bench in the other one. But either ways, the minutes aren't just that good for Trent. So I would go for Robertson, who I think has been back from injury for much longer than Trent. So I do think his minutes are a lot better in Double Game Week 34. And I foresee him potentially starting both games with the way that Liverpool are kind of set up in the league right now. They have to win every single game to even stand a chance of winning the league. So Robertson, for me, I feel, with the way he's playing recently as well, I wouldn't mind going Robertson over Trent as a, as a differential defender from Liverpool. All right, and then for the attackers, I have Salah, Luis Diaz, Darwin, and Jota all here. Salah and, uh, Salah and Luis Diaz started the game last night, along with Cody Gakpo. That was the front three. Um, and Gakpo, I, I haven't included him in this list because I don't think any one of us would be brave enough to go for Cody Gakpo. Despite him being, I feel, one of the best players last night for Liverpool. But that aside, because we're not going to go for him in double game week 34, I'll talk about Luis Diaz and Salah. Both of them got 66 minutes. In terms of how well they're playing in, uh, in the base of the eye test, definitely Luis Diaz, I feel, is playing better than Salah, despite Salah dispatching a penalty last night. And that's because 
Salah just has been way off the mark recently. He also missed a sitter uh, just before halftime last night. So I think in general, when we look at Salah, there are games where he just kind of disappears from the attack. He just kind of doesn't, uh, you know, involve himself that much or either he's super isolated from the game. And that's what I don't really like about Salah. But the thing is that he always kind of comes off with a penalty or a goal somehow or rather. So him playing 66 minutes for me kind of makes me feel as if he's definitely guaranteed to play both in the double for Game Week 34. And therefore, I don't think I can kind of take him out of the team. I think it would take a lot for me to go against Salah. Um, so I think for me, Salah would still be in the team. I'm just not super confident of his form right now. He just looks quite off the mark. Um, we'll hope for, pen for penalties there. For Luis Diaz, 66 minutes for him also kind of makes me quite confident of his minutes in 34 because he, for me, is one of Liverpool's best attackers right now. And him being rested at the 66 minute taken off, I think kind of indicates to me he starts both. So that's why in terms of going for Liverpool attackers, I would probably go for Luis Diaz and Salah. But then there are two kind of differentials that you can go for further down the list which is Darwin Nunes and Jota. Both of them didn't start the game last night. They came off the bench for Luis Diaz and Salah respectively and played 24 minutes. So what this kind of indicates to me is that they're pretty well rested for the double game week. But that said, I do think that the front three would still be Luis Diaz, Salah and then one of Darwin and Jota for either of the games and that basically means I feel that Darwin starts one and is benched the other and same for Jota as well who is just coming back from injury so I think in terms of minutes I am expecting that Darwin Nunes and Jota get both around about 100 120 to 100 minutes so I don't think that that's going to be super that's not going to sit well for a number of, uh, of FPL managers who want to go for the safe minutes kind of players. So therefore, I think Salah and Diaz are the ones I would go for because I'm kind of the FPL manager where I want to kind of go for the safer picks. More minutes kind of means that there's a higher chance that they, that they get an attacking return. So I'd probably go for Luis Diaz and Salah from Liverpool and I don't think I would go for Darwin Nunes or Jota on a free hit. Now, for the Arsenal players... Odegaard, sorry, Saka, Odegaard, Havertz, Gabriel, Saliba, Ben White and Raya, all of them played 90 minutes. So essentially what I have here is the back line, Gabriel, Saliba, White and Raya, as well as the front three that most of us usually consider, which is Saka, Odegaard and Havertz. So they played the full game. Further down the list, Martinelli came off for Jesus. Um, and, and they kind of played, uh, Martinelli played 67, Jesus played 23. In terms of Arsenal players, I think a lot of them look very, very leggy. And that kind of puts me in a situation where I think I need to make a choice. Right, Already, you have to choose between going double defence or double attack for Arsenal. I don't think either one of us, I don't think any one of us would be going for triple defence or triple, uh, triple attack. So, in terms of the attackers first, I think... There is a chance. I mean, Saka and Odegaard are pretty much guaranteed to start both games in 34. But I was thinking of a differential like Harvard's here. But looking at the amount of minutes he's played recently, it is a lot. Already over the weekend, he played the full game. And then now um, in Europe, he also played 90 minutes. I foresee that someone like Gabriel Jesus could fill in the, in the number 9 spot in the false 9 position that Harvard's has been occupying. And that kind of makes me think that Harvard's is a little bit dangerous to go for. Yes, he has started pretty much every single game in the recent game weeks. But if there's a time to rest, if there's a time that he needs to rest, I think now is the time as well. So 90 minutes for Harvard's for me kind of indicates to me it's a little bit dangerous there. For Gabriel as well, I feel that is the case with him. I think he has started a lot of games definitely. But he's, he's been making a couple of mistakes and I think that could play into Arteta's mind as well. Maybe Gabriel starts to miss out one or two games in the double game week to rest him well. It could be the case where he's really fatigued and thereafter, you know, um, needs a rest. And there are ready-made uh, replacements for him. There's Ben White who could fill in at centre-back as well. Uh, Jakob Kiro as well could also be a, a, a substitute for him in, in, in centre-back. So the one I foresee definitely starting both is Saliba. And I think Ben White for me is also someone that I would see starting both the double game week games because he came off early 
uh, in the Aston Villa game. You would remember that he came off before Arsenal conceded two games against Aston Villa. So I think for me, in terms of defenders, the minutes that are safest is probably Saliba and Ben White. I'll put Gabriel as a slight risk to kind of be benched. There's obviously a case he could play both games, but I think he's a, he's a little, a little bit more at risk. And then for Raya, 90 minutes, no issues there as well. He's just a keeper. And for Martinelli and Jesus, Martinelli could be coming back into the team, but I think when we're going for double game week assets, with the way that uh, Arsenal has been rotating Martinelli recently, I don't think we'll be brave enough to go there. Same for Jesus as well, who has been missing out some games here and there. They're kind of managing his uh, little knock that he has complained about recently, where he kind of put out on social media that he's been always playing through pain of late. So there we go with the minutes here. And as I've mentioned, this would this definitely have an impact on how we choose these players going forward into uh, the free hit draft if you're building a free hit for 34 or if you're making free transfers as well. So hopefully this graphic was useful for you guys. Let's now take a look at the draft that I've made after considering all these minutes that the Arsenal and Liverpool players have played in Europe. So after tinkering for one whole week, this is the draft that I've arrived at in terms of my final Double Game Week 34 free hit draft. Now again, I've reverted back to a 3-5-2. I initially uploaded an earlier video and it was also a 3-5-2, but to be honest, between this period, I have gone back and forth between a 3-4-3 and a 3-5-2. And Cunha, who's on the bench right now, has come into my draft a couple of times, but right now he's on the bench and I will discuss in general why this is the case as well. Um, but for now, let's take a look at the draft in general here. And I've gone for triple Arsenal, triple Liverpool, as well as triple um, Crystal Palace. And then I have Bereton Diaz as well as Solanke uh, in, as the other two players. So three from each team in terms of Palace, Arsenal, Liverpool, and then Bereton Diaz and Solanke. So there are quite a number of, I guess, picks that could be quite different from some of you guys. So I'll talk through why I've gone for them. And let's start at the Arsenal triple up. So I've gone for Saka, Ben White, and Raya. So I've gone for one attacker and two defenders. So instead of going for two attackers, the reason why I've chosen two defenders is simply because of the fixtures here, as well as how Arsenal are playing right now. I don't foresee them scoring a lot of goals against Wolves away or Chelsea at home. Right. So therefore, I would be more confident, at least that's, that's based off my own judgment, that I'm slightly more confident of their clean sheet potential because over the course of the season, they have shown themselves to be a very, very strong defence. And I don't think the game against Aston Villa changes that too much. They really only conceded those two chances to Arsenal, uh, to, to Aston Villa. Um, and obviously, at this point in time, when we're talking about Arsenal defenders... Gabriel will be the one most people go for. Saliba is also a decent option. But I've kind of chosen to go slightly different here. I've gone for Raya and Ben White. So the reason why I've gone for Raya first is because there's not a lot of good keeper options here this week. You could go for Jordan Pickford. You could go for um, you know, uh, Henderson from Crystal Palace. But for Crystal Palace, I prefer Mitchell, who I will discuss later on as well. So I've already covered the Crystal Palace defense. So that really only leaves someone like Pickford, maybe Jose Saar, but Jose Saar plays Arsenal at home in the first game uh, and Bournemouth at home in the second one. So maybe that's just kind of a one clean sheet game for, for Jose Saar at best. So I think for me, if I really want to maximize the points on my free hit, I would just go for good players in all positions. And I think Raya as my Arsenal cover there. Uh, in goal, kind of gives me good potential for points there as well. So Raya there. The reason why I've chosen Ben White over someone like Gabriel or Saliba is because firstly, when I compare attacking threat of White and Gabriel, it's much better than Saliba. So Saliba's out of the question for me. And when I'm comparing Ben White and Gabriel, as I mentioned in the previous section, I feel like Gabriel is a slight risk. He could be rested in one of those games because of how many minutes he's played. And Ben White coming off against Aston Villa, around the 60-ish minutes, um, kind of indicates to me, as I've mentioned, he would play both in double game week in 34. And there is also very decent attacking threat from him in open play because he plays on the side of Saka. He's got him a couple of assists just by passing the ball to Saka and Saka just going all the way, dribbling all the way and, and scoring. So Ben White, of course, he has a pretty decent cross in him as well. Um, and of late, we've been seeing it. So I do like that Ben White's attacking threat is kind of, uh, you know, okay in terms of comparison to, to Gabriel. So I'm okay to go for Ben White there. 
um, and that is the Arsenal triple up. For the Liverpool triple up, I've gone for two attackers instead of two defenders. And I think that this one is for obvious reasons. Liverpool defensively have looked really, really shaky. And both of their games are away games. So it's Fulham away and Everton away. Uh, Fulham have been playing very, very well at home. So I do foresee that Liverpool will concede in that game. And against Everton, despite the way that they've been playing right now, it's always a tough game when it comes to the Merseyside derby. So I'm really only confident of starting one Liverpool defender, which is Virgil van Dijk. I've chosen to go for the safer option. I could very well switch Van Dijk out for someone like Robertson closer to the deadline. And for now, I think I'm going with uh, the, the safety of minutes here with Van Dijk. Um, and he does have a decent uh, threat from set pieces as well. Now, for Salah and Luis Diaz, as I've mentioned, I think they're the attackers that I will go for from Liverpool. As I've mentioned in the previous section, they are the most secure for minutes. And Luis Diaz looking really sharp right now. I think he hasn't left my draft um, in uh, this whole week. I know some people are kind of considering maybe leaving out, uh, leaving out some Liverpool players because of the form that they're in right now. But I still think Luis Diaz, based on the eye test, looks really good. So he's still in my draft. For Salah, he has the armband right now, but that's simply because he always, he, it's just, in my mind, he just always comes away somehow with a return despite him being very uninvolved in games. And when I compare to Saka, who I already mentioned, I don't feel Arsenal go are going to get a lot of attacking returns in those two games. The Fulham away and Everton away game is definitely better in terms of attacking um, for Liverpool. So that's why I've kind of put it on Sal Salah for now and not Saka. It could very, very well change, but it would pretty much be either of these two players. Right? And then uh, in terms of the Crystal Palace triple up now, I've gone for Mitchell, Eze and Mateta. So Mateta and Eze have not left my squad um, this whole week. And that's simply because I really like the way that they looked against Liverpool. And I think in the weeks before as well, Mateta looked really sharp. For Eze, he is the standout pick from Crystal Palace. Um, he's already risen in uh, point 0.1 in price. A lot of people are moving for Eze. He's on penalties. He's really good from open play. Kind of uh, justifies himself there. So for me, it's a real question of whether I want to triple up on Crystal Palace. And I think in terms of going for Mitchell here, I do get the good attacking threat here. Um, because we already saw against Liverpool that Mitchell got an assist. But a lot of people are going for Munoz, who's on the other uh, flank in terms of a wing-back. But I actually prefer Mitchell's attacking threat to, to Munoz. So I've kind of gone for a slightly differential Crystal Palace defender here in Mitchell. But already having him or Munoz would, would still be a, a differential either way. So you could go for Munoz if that's the player you prefer. I've chosen to go for, for Mitchell. And the reason why I like their fixtures is because it's both home games. If I look at the double game fixtures for, let's say, Everton, who's also another team you could consider to go for the defenders, I very, very much prefer Crystal Palace's fixtures. It's West Ham at home, and then Newcastle is not an easy game, but it's also at home. And then for Pickford, he has Liverpool in the second game. Right? So, and and as, uh, Everton just have not been looking good in terms of the defence. And Pickford has been making loads of mistakes as well. So I prefer to go for the Crystal Palace defence and therefore Mitchell's in the team. So there we have the triple up from all these three teams. Now Solanke, I think he kind of justifies himself. He's also someone that has not left my draft this whole week. He's the only player from Bournemouth that I would have in my starting eleven. The defensive fixtures are really bad for them. It's Aston Villa away and Wolves away. So both away games, I think defensively, I don't see them keeping clean sheets there. So Solanke, he's on penalties, etc. He will still be in the team here. And for Barrington Diaz, this is the mega differential that I'm going for. So in a sense where I'm free hitting in gaming 34, I really wanted to go for a good differential. Someone that not a lot of people on free hits would, uh, not on free hits would go for. And I think Barrington Diaz is the one that fits the bill because he has two fixtures here. And Burnley at home is arguably one of the best fixtures you could ask for. And then Manchester United away is simply a fixture that I could also see Manchester United conceding in. And Barrington Diaz, yes, playing for Sheffield. Sheffield's attack has not been super good. But whenever they score, he always looks to be the one that's super involved. And that's kind of why I think I, I would be very, very excited of going for a differential like Barrington Diaz. So he's still in the team. He's only recently entered the team, I'll be honest. But I actually really like the look of a differential like him as well so there we go with the starting 11 and before i talk about the bench let me just discuss the reason why it is structured this way the starting 11 
And I like the pros of this draft, that is that none of my attackers are playing any of my defenders. If you look at the fixtures for all my attackers, I, whether they score, uh, I mean if they score, the hope is that they score, they would not be affecting the potential of points for my defenders. So that kind of raises the ceiling of this free hit draft already, in essence. And when I'm looking at this draft as well, I do have the core players on the free hit draft that people will be going for, like Eze, Solanke, Salah, Saka, you know, Van Dijk. I still cover majority of the bases, so I don't think I'm losing out too much here in terms of comparing with other free hit drafts. And I do have very, very decent differentials that I'm going for, players that I'm excited about, like Mitchell as well as Barrett and Diaz. And really the downside of this draft, I feel, is that the Wolves players, none of them are in this draft, even though they do have a double as well. So it is really that Wolves second fixture, Bournemouth at home, that kind of worries me a little bit, leaving Cunha and Eight Nuri on the bench. Eight Nuri, as a recording, is still yellow flagged, so... Closer to the deadline, if he is, if the flag is removed, or if you know we get good news from Gary O'Neill, maybe he comes into the draft, right? But that kind of settles the Wolves players on the bench, and that's why the draft is is set up like this, so that I can kind of maximize the free hit points that I'm gonna get from all these players, all right? So in terms of the other two players on the bench, I haven't mentioned is Pickford and Senesi. I don't think I would need them in any case. They are just placeholders as well. So. Really, when I look at this draft, I've kind of landed on this where I feel it, it is the balance between going slightly risky as well as having some core picks as well. So let me know what you think of this draft if you're on a free hit, if you are using free transfers to deaden your team before you wildcard in Game Week 35. Let me know which players in this draft as differentials you are going for as well. I'd be keen to know. But if not, thank you guys for watching to this point. I hope this video was useful for you. I did ramble on quite a bit, but there was a lot to cover as well. And I will see you guys in the Game Week 34 deadline stream as always, three hours before the deadline. There's not a lot of Game Weeks left, so hopefully the end of the season is going to be strong for us. I will catch you guys on the deadline stream tomorrow. Bye-bye.